So to make the Forbes 30 under 30 list is a big deal because you're one of the top 30 in the whole country. Well, we have one of those people, Dr. Brianna Chen from Chester County. There she is. She made that list. We're so impressed by that. And what she's working on right now is creating the first antidepressant specifically for women. This is groundbreaking research, and she is here right now. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. So first of all, let's shout out. So you still have family that's here in the area. That's right. I grew up in Exton and went to school in Bryn Mawr, uh, specifically at Agnes Irwin. Which is, I'm also an alum. So, oh, there's uh, your family. How neat is that? So just uh, <laughs> mom and dad? That's right. My older sister. So and now what are your siblings doing right now? So now my sister is an anesthesiologist at CHOP, and my brother works in a research facility at CHOP as well. So they're all smart and talented <laughs> and helping us all, so we think that's amazing. So you're up at Columbia, and that's you're right. doing research. What is it that you're working on right now? Because this has gotten the attention, obviously, of Forbes. Mm -hmm. Well, currently my research right now focuses on what is called stress resilience. and. A you know, exposure to stress is one of the greatest contributing factors for a stress-related psychiatric disease such as depression and anxiety. Um, now, most of the population, when they're exposed to stress, they will not develop a psychiatric disorder. However, there's a subset of the population who is very susceptible to stress. And what we see is that women are significantly more susceptible to stress than men are. So they're two times more likely to develop depression, and they're three times as likely to develop PTSD. Um, and so what my research does is we look specifically at the mechanisms that underlie stress resilience. Um, and what we look at is specifically the stress resilience mechanisms that underlie uh, resilience and susceptibility in women. Um, and if we can target those mechanisms, then we, then we can potentially develop uh, more specific and efficacious antidepressants to better treat and prevent psychiatric disorders in women. So it seems something, like now that you've come up with it, it seems such an obvious thing that men and women are different. Like we know that we're, we are um, often, you know, very different in the way that we think and the way that we like deal with different things. But we, when we make medications, they usually just, we test them on a population and we just think it's across the board. It's so brilliant to think that maybe women need specific things that may work better with them. So like, what does that look like when you're, you're up there, Columbia, like, That's are right. you working in labs or working with um, people? Like, how does it work when you're trying to formulate something that we think that's going to target women specifically and give help. So historically, women have actually been excluded from a lot of biomedical research, and that's at every level, right? At the female research scientist level, as well as at the research subject level. And so what we're doing is what we are specifically including female individuals in our research. And what we see is that when we do that, we can really improve the applicability, the efficacy, um, and really the statistical um, power of the studies that we produce. Um, and in doing so, we can really make better antidepressants that will better target um, these female-specific uh, resilience mechanisms. So how much, um, shout out women's education, Agnes Sirwin's an all-girls school, how much do you think it comes from where you have the model where women are leaders and where you, um, you know, you don't, it's not about us without us. You need to be part of the, whatever the solution, whatever the issue is being dealt with. How much do you think of what happened like right here where you grew up affected where you are now? I think that Agnes Sirwin has really fundamentally affected my worldview, right? I think in society there's generally a mindset that men are the default um, and that, as we've seen, has really led to um, real-world consequences for health inequities, um, specifically for women, right? But when you grow up in a really nurturing, um, all-girls environment like at Agnes Irwin, then you don't have that mindset that men are the default, right? We can really better see that the world is built for men, by men, and we can have the power to address those issues. And we love men. It's just also that it's also good to be able to look at for studying, you know, specific sets of people that we can do research for that as well. And I think it's true of any girls' school. So I'll say, you know, that great, that school's great. But um, we do appreciate any time that people get to work in an environment where you can learn and grow. So what happens next? What's the next step in, um, like, in the process? Like, how close are we get to getting this to market? Well, we're still pretty far away from that. Really, what my research is is it's sort of that first step in starting to create those female-specific antidepressants. And what we think is that ultimately by, you know, taking this first step towards making personalized medicine more of a reality, we can really make um, the field of healthcare as a whole um, 
better for everybody. For everyone, right? Yeah. Both men and women. Keep up the great work. We're going to see you on the next, the 40 under 40 list <laughs> next time around. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, very inspired and motivated right now. So